You want to do the intro? You tell them. I'll translate. Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Duff Dog, the door scratching dog. Ouch, you hit your melon. You don't want to do that. And I are going to see if we can't get a 1986 Chevrolet short bed back on the road. That's right, we're doing another square body. So a little backstory on this thing, I've really wanted a square body short bed ever since Chin got his, and so finally one came up that was A, close enough, B, cheap enough, and C, in decent enough shape that I would actually bring it home. Yeah, I have really high standards, don't I? So we drove about three and a half hours to get this one, so it was not close. It is kind of rusty, and it doesn't have a lot of the options I wanted, like two-tone, I wanted like a 73.4 with the deep, grill in it but I like white and it's a short bed and uh, it was in our wheelhouse for the price range so loaded up in the pickup we got her home we did drive it on the trailer but of course today it will not run it's got a 4.3 v6 it's got the center bolt valve covers which I think all the four threes did it's even listed on the spid in the glove box as a vortex Drinking my collector's edition hams here. Seems like you can't buy them anymore. If anybody's got any in their stash or at their local store, snag them up, hit me up, take everyone we can get. It's got a quadra puke, quadra bog, quadra slobber, quadra junk, quadra jet, four barrel on it. Power steering, power brakes, no AC. It did come with the other two rallies, but I don't have rally caps. The grill was on it in the pictures in uh, the Facebook marketplace and then I got there and it wasn't there he's like oh I just set it in for the pictures thanks for telling me that but he also said it didn't run because it needs a fuel pump and then I got there and it ran and then he adjusted the timing and then it didn't run so hot so we gotta get this thing running so that we can get it out of here and kind of want to daily this thing it does have the chrome front bumper the uh, chin up front she's buggered up it's got a little whiskey dent in the bumper here nothing too bad I don't want a nice one I just want a driver Front fender's nice. I think we'll uh, strip all this stuff off and try buffing that out. She's a custom deluxe model. Well, you haven't checked out the inside of this thing yet. Blue vinyl interior, vinyl seats, vinyl floor mats. I don't know, was there like an armrest that was glued on here? I don't see any holes. Those actually kind of look like they might be factory. I don't know, whatever. I don't know a ton about square bodies. Dash pads, pretty nice, got a crack over there. Came out of Wisconsin, which is a typically pretty rusty state. Floors are okay. I mean, they probably are pitted, but that rocker is gone. Cab corner is not so good. Bottoms of the doors got a little rot. I don't like the big ugly mirrors that are on these as opposed to earlier ones, the sport mirrors. No tilt, like I said, automatic, no cruise. Does have FM radio. Seat is blowed out real bad. Box. Got the typical rust behind the wheels and a little bit over the wheels. Bed floor is surprisingly good. They like to rot out. Oh, yeah, it's starting right there. Like I said, there's the two rallies that came with. He gave me a tilt column, but it's out of like a 88 to 94. So probably just going to toss it because it's got no keys either. Might steal a steering wheel because anybody who's been around these GM steering wheels of this vintage, they like to get real sticky and sweaty when it's humid. So yeah, we got inner and outer rockers, we got cab supports. Those are the rear ones? I don't know. And then, oh yeah, cab corners. A lot of people like to do that. Go and buy all these patch panels and never put them in. Tailgate, a bunch of crap must have sat in there and rotted that out. I do have a tailgate, but it's not in white. This one will be fine. We need to lube up the latches because they don't like to stay on there. I hate these tow bumpers. So I think Chin said he's got an extra sport bumper and some brackets, so that'll be way good. It's obviously got to be lowered. We did pick up some tires on the way home and yeah, we stopped at the uh, watering hole about halfway home went in there guys like hey is that your pickup on the trailer 
I didn't say yes, I said something else. But long story short, the guy's like, yeah, I got some wheels and tires for it. So then my, my ears perked up. Went over to his place, he's got a 94 Astro van all-wheel drive that blew out the torsion bars. So I bought that thing for 300 bucks with brand new Cooper Cobras, 235.60s, 245.60s. And uh, we dropped this off, loaded that up, stole the wheels off it, dropped it off at uh, scrap yard. Got a few bucks back. So I'm into these wheels and tires for like nothing. Wheels are just aluminum we're gonna scrap, but we got some tires for cheap. Moral of the story is always swing into the small town bars, get to know the uh, local people because you never know what they might have. Scored us an Astro van with some uh, good tires. There's the grill. Wonder how many clips are busted for that. That looks like just flashing off the molding process. But that clip is busted. This side, she's a bit chewier. Both there and there, but it's not rusty on the front of the box. It does have the fuel filler on the correct side. Oh yeah, he said he it wasn't running good. Not because of the fuel pump, because the catalytic converter was plugged. So we cut that off. She sounds like a grain truck she, when she does run. She pit it up pretty good there. Like I said, bottoms of the doors and the rockers. A little bit of rust in the floor here. Not super terrible. Not gonna lose a small child through there at least. What's she got? 38,900, so assuming 138. Did they really not have like an armrest or a door pull? You just got those and these cheap things? The good news about these square bodies, you can buy everything. I mean, you can buy those patch panels, you can find new dash pads, you can find seats, you can find door panels. So even if you want to upgrade it. Yeah, they called it a Vortec in 86. I thought the Vortec didn't come out till like 94 on the four threes and like 95 or six in the pickups in the 5.7s. <sighs> Gonna miss those sandwiches. Comment down below what kind of uh, adult beverage you like because we're gonna have to switch it up i don't know we'll probably end up with what bush lattes some uh, blue smoothie keystone lights coors light i don't know what we're gonna do I'll figure something out so there it is the 4.3 v6 in all of its glory the jack is even there I like these four foot deep uh, fan shrouds. If this thing doesn't work out, I can always swap a small block or an LS or something in it. I mean, we do have that six liter just sitting there rotting away. But I'm not a big horsepower guy, especially in daily drivers. They just cause you trouble. And uh, all I'm gonna do is use this thing for putting around to work and hauling stuff locally. And engine swaps, just snow bogs. Then you gotta do exhaust, and then you're doing wiring, and then you're looking for brackets for power steering pump, and then you gotta put a fuel pump in if it's an LS, and flash a computer, and engine mounts, and radiator hoses. Well, speaking of that, it does have form hoses. No uh, flexi hoses here. But we're just gonna leave it as is, hopefully. I do think I have another 4.3, maybe not. Maybe, maybe I sold that to my derby buddy. I don't think I have a 4.3 anymore. I did have an 85 4.3 out of one of these one time. But I do know where there is one, maybe. Anyway, I didn't drive it around the block. Literally, the guy turned it around, and then I drove it onto the trailer all the further I drove it. I mean, not very often you see a smog pump that's still hooked up. It's got that air intake tube on it. Well, there's the handle and everything for the jack. Side post batteries. I thought they sat in there kitty wampus. Maybe they turned them in these later ones. And then, I suppose he was diagnosing the fuel pump so he's got clear fuel line. That's always a bad idea. Oh, red distributor cap. This thing's super fast. I don't know what this was supposed to reference on the, the vacuum hose, but we got her plugged. So we should probably just go ahead and delete that air pump because the French do we need that for? And replace that fuel line. See why this thing doesn't start. I think the first thing we're gonna do Let's give it a little tickle of hot sauce and uh, see if that's the reason she's not starting. Because he thought it was a fuel issue before. If it was a timing issue, it would be backfiring. Should we throw this with all the other air cleaner lids that we never put back on? We gotta get it running first before we lower it or uh, change wheels or anything like that or put patch panels in because we just need to make this thing mobile. Superstar premium, dang. No gas, doesn't appear. 
Crank it over anyway after pumping it a bunch. You'd think if there was gas, it would pop off. You knew it wasn't gonna go. At least the starter sounds good. I think they're the same as a small block. These 4.3s are literally just a small block Chevy with the front two cylinders cut off for the most part. I'm gonna go grab the hot sauce. We'll drizzle a little in there. Hot sauce away. So we're not getting fuel. We need to uh, see if it's not coming up to the fuel pump. Looks like there's fuel there. He said something about air in the line or something. I don't know. The fuel gauge says it's empty. I suppose he just had enough gas in there to get it on the trailer. I guess what we'll do. Fill her up with gas. Don't be a wank. Fill your tank. So I think we'll, uh, we'll do that first. Dump some petrol in the tank. And then see what she does. At least the 86 has a fuel filler on the right side. Well, the left side. Chin's 81's got it on the right side. That would be annoying. See if it's still got the uh, anti-flipper, anti-theft flipper door thingy-mabobber in there. Usually those are hacked out. I got a feeling this isn't gonna fix it. What do you think, Duff? Just need fuel? Hopefully. Well, now if we give her a little hot sauce, we'll see what happens. Is that the vent tube you fill up? I don't know. It was just out of gas. Just kidding. Just can't see if it's cycling any through that fuel line. Plug wires appear to be on. Um, timing kind of helps it. Look at all these vacuum lines. That I mean, we could have a vacuum leak anywhere. It would be nice to just ixnay all this stuff. There's the choke that isn't hooked up. What does all this stuff do? Oh, she's definitely got some blow by. Dang it! Oh, hey, we gained a straw for a. Penetrating oil now. Oh look! Three eighths inch extension. Oh look at that guy down there. That's like gold. Score duff. Oh, my excitement went to disappointment. It's Napa brand. Dang it. It's pretty bad when you're more excited about the straw you found. I think we're gonna turn the idle up a bit. It seems like it runs good when you get on it. But I adjusted the timing a little bit. I don't really adjust anything with a timing light. I just do it by ear because who knows where the mark's at on that, if it's right or... Let's turn that idle up. See what that does. Battery is also sounding weak. You know what's not sounding weak? That freaking thunderstorm out there, huh? Pouring cats and dogs stuff. Just gonna spin this screwy screw in a bit here. All right, meow, where's this thing at? Don't think, boy, man. Do you know how fast you were going? What the French? Oh, it's not a flat screw, it's a hex.
Why is it that everything we buy it needs transfusion fluid in it, Duff? Got kind of a squeaky rattle coming from up here. I don't know if it's the alternator or the smog pump or the water pump or the power steering pump, but I think we're gonna just uh, unhook this smog pump. Just temporarily, Greta, don't worry about it. How dare you! And uh, see if the noise goes away. I'm just trying to see if anything's loose here. Oh, I think I found it. I think she needs a water pump. Dang it. She just can't win. So we're gonna have to get one of those coming. Wow, how did that not leak? I was looking at the gauges inside. Oil pressure was pegged to the moon, so that was good. I knew the squeak wasn't coming from there. Oh, never mind, that gauge is just pegged all the time. Temp was pegged as well, so that's probably not working either. Again, should be the same as a small block, but I don't have one of those on hand. I don't really feel like putting a used one on. We could do that. But look at, at all these vacuum lines and wires and just everything for a quarter jet. But it seems like it runs okay though. The idle was way too low. And I don't know what this vacuum thing does. That's supposed to kick that up or suck that in or I don't know. The uh, throttle linkage spring has clearly been shortened because somebody wanted some more pull on that. I didn't check the engine oil. Check the dipstick in. <laughs> she's way up there like she's been getting too much fuel so we should uh, maybe address that. And she's way above full. It looks pretty clear too. And smells a lot like gasoline. Oh, radiator's full. Well, that kind of sucks. Stupid water pump. That won't be too hard to change, though. I guess we should see if uh, it's charging as well. Duff, get the multimeter out. Oh, yeah, we got to plug this in. That'll help. There we go. Thirteen point one. I'd say the idle's still a bit high, but I think we'll play around with that some more. She's charging. I think it was like fourteen point three or whatever. Uh, anything over twelve and a half, thirteen volts is good enough for me. Some guys will argue you got to have fourteen and a half volts or whatever, but. Anything over 12, it should be doing its job. Would be nice to just kind of eliminate all this emission stuff, but uh, it just is gonna snowball. You know, you're gonna have to find a different carburetor that doesn't have all that stuff, because I feel like you're just wasting your time plugging that stuff off and using that carburetor. And then you got the smog bump, and then you got all the ports going into the manifold and whatever's going on back there. I mean, you could spend a whole Saturday doing that, and if it works, we're just gonna leave it. I do think we'll probably just un hook the belt for the smog pump when I put that all back together because you know, that's robbing horsepower. We probably only got, I don't know, 86? Probably only got, what, 170 horsepower here to start out with. Maybe not even that. So I think that's pretty much going to wrap this for the night. Duff is tuckered out. We got it run pretty good. He said you still got to play with that idle. Might play around with the timing just a hair, but I think it's it's pretty much where it needs to be. We'll check that tranny fluid again. Should probably change oil on it. And we'll get a water pump coming. And then we can move on to the fun stuff, like putting a grill in and uh, getting some wheels and tires on it. Maybe even drop her down on the ground a bit because this thing's it's nosebleed high and I'm not going to drive anything like that. Duff says that's unacceptable. All right, punch it out. Turns out this thing's got the same oil filter as the uh, like 88 to 95 TBI engines, PF52E if you got a Delco one. And we're gonna put some uh, Quaker steak because it's peak performance and it was free from the little old lady across the street who's cleaning out her garage. Shout out to Elaine. I'm gonna go underneath and uh, hope she's a 916. Gonna make a mess. It's not gonna run in the floor drain. And uh, probably spill a little bit dumping it in. Look at this oil fill. It just shoots right up out front, dipsticks right out front. This thing was meant for 
fleets where you had some nitwit driving it that probably wasn't going to check that stuff anyway, but it's right there. <sighs> that red distributor cap, that is key. This thing's going to have all of the horsepowers. All right, I'm going underneath. Wish me luck. Is it awkward when you ride a bone every time you go underneath a vehicle? I don't care, because these things are the cat's pajamas. Except for when you're cutting anything, and then all the sparks go underneath your back. And they get you good. Here we go. Really the only oil we spilt so far is uh, me pushing the oil filter across underneath the pickup, tipping that over. But look at this. See that uh, misshaped oil pan on the uh, transmission? Never mind that it's all oily from leaking. Sucker's got a turbo 400 in it. I had a buddy who had one of these with a 4.3 and a turbo 400. Weird. I don't know if that was the thing they did back then or they're just using over leftover parts or what, but it seems kind of odd to have a heavy duty three speed automatic find a tiny little 4.3. Maybe these things are real powerhouses. Who knows? Well, you guys might as well see me make a mess here. Oh, not bad at all. Like we knew what we were doing. What brand is this guy? Oh, it's the good stuff. Pro Select. If it was Napa Gold, it would be acceptable because then it's a Wix. A little scale on the frame. Properly dispose of your oil filters. We just store it there before we do whatever it is that we do with oil filters. Cap supports are good. I've never seen where they got this little plastic shield under here. Oh, look at that big old clump of mud just waiting to fall on my melon. Oh, let's check to make sure there's no second filter gasket up there because bad things happen when you start them up and you get two oil filter gaskets. Oh, now my fingers are all oily. I don't like snugging them up with the wrench, but we, uh, can't get it very tight with her hand. Good enough. I'll let that drain for a bit. I don't know how many quarts that pan is, but I think it's five, so there was some extra in there. I think I'm gonna look just to make sure that these hold five quarts like a small block Chevy. I'm guessing they do. A little extra ain't gonna hurt either. So you guys will see me use this all the time. It's the Funnel Buddy Pro Model 50-1. So it's got this sweet lid on the top. And it's got this spring-loaded bottom, so your funnel is always clean. And it's got this little quart jug down at the bottom to let all your crap run into. Pretty handy. You can see the uh, ATF in it from last night. But get yourself one of these. Pretty freaking awesome. Definitely worth it. Keeps it clean. Good way to store it. Hang it up on the wall. Tell them Mortsky sent you. Where you been? Out scouting for chicks? Did you find any? Bring me back some? No. So according to the interwebs, these early 4.3s are uh, four and a half quarts. So maybe that's always over full. The last guy put five in. Whatever. Makes sense. Holds a little less because it's got a shorter oil pan than the five liter. Or five seven. Whatever. So we're going to dump four and a half in. Pop it off. Check it. Oh, it does have a date code on the bottom. Five, one of oh, five ten of oh six. So I mean, it's only fifteen years old. It'll be fine. Good enough. Then when you're done with your funnel, you just stick her back in there and keeps the dust from getting in on the top. Drains out the bottom. Every decade, you drain that out. Or if you're really in a pinch for a quart of mystery fluid, you take that off the shelf. Funnel Buddy, check them out. Not a paid promotion. Had that thing way before we started the Lube Tube channel. Put our 710 cap back on. Boop. So now I'll fire this thing up for a second. Make sure we don't have any oil spraying everywhere. Make sure it starts and then we'll check that oil again. What are the odds it starts? I'm saying she's gonna pop right off. I'm also saying that uh, we should hook the battery back up. 
idiot. You're a dumbass. <laughs> Wishful thinking. So clean, you can't even see it. Just above the full mark. That's weird. Oh well. Good enough for the girls we go with. Here's our temp center wire. I don't know why that's not working. Oil pressure, that one's electric. Yep. Just for S's and G's, let's uh, pull a spark plug out. See how this thing's been running in the past. I'm guessing she's been running real fat. Oh man. Porcelain's uh, all blistered up. These things don't look that good. Should probably get some plugs for this thing and slam in there. Not today though. What about stop juice? You don't need that? Oh yeah, we got all the stop juice. Are you latched? Maybe. Oh, push the rubber in there. Yeah, that was dumb. You don't want to push your rubber in. I always keep her attached. Tech tip of the day. I think it's good enough under here for a test drive. We still got that clear fuel hose, but I think we'll leave that for a little while just in case we're getting fuel issues like we had before, AKA out of fuel. Just keep an eye on that for air bubbles. It's not gonna rub through immediately. Hopefully it's not for like an aquarium and just breaks down on us. Guess we're gonna find out. Might as well take her for a hot lap. Oh, I didn't quite get it. Definitely needs some wipers too. Duff heard the hood shut and was like, hey, ready to do this? Go for an R-I-D-E? Mm -hmm. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Just let me uh, put this stuff away and we will. All right. Blow it up. Good boy. Oh. See, it's bad. Come, square body. Door latches suck so much, huh, Duff? What is wrong with this seat? Is it not bolted in? That ain't right. I think that's just what we get. All right, I'm ready this time. Let's go, load up. Sorry for the confusion.
she just throws mud. We're not hitting on all of them, though. I think we need some spark plugs and then to address that timing. What do you think? Yeah. Maybe a set of wires, too. Just a skosh of a diesel. Yeah, I know. What do you think? Is that a high five? We should keep it? Ah, for a little while. Oh, for a little while. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a good boy. Horn works. Oh, we didn't check the radio. Son of a biscuit, no radio. I got a resolution for that. If you like Duff and I, and you got a lot of garbage that doesn't have a radio in it, and you don't want to go through putting a stereo and spending a bunch of money and cutting holes for speakers. Get yourself one of these uh, Treb Lab remote Bluetooth radio thingers. Just hook that thing up to your phone. You can jam out whatever tunes you want. You can listen to it in the vehicle. You can listen to it when you're working on stuff remotely. You can throw it in your skid steer. You can take it golfing. You can take it to the lake. These things are well worth the money. I, uh, Thought it was just the rich snobby kids who had these but now that i got it it's pretty good duff approves as well so what did we learn oh yeah let's uh see if we can take and uh find out which cylinder's not hitting did we fail to address that this thing's got headers that's probably the issue factory headers i'm gonna get the heat gun and we'll uh See if we can see which cylinder's cold. And that'll tell us which one's not hitting. Which should be easier on headers. Thinking the heat doesn't transfer as well from cylinder to cylinder like a manifold does? No? What's this thing by? E-Tech City infrared thermometer. If you got uh, your buddy's kids come over to play in your garage or you got your own kids, get one of these things. Tell them it's a laser. They'll be playing with it all the time. So, cylinder one. 230, 240. Cylinder three, ooh, 340. So this cylinder one is not happy, compared to that one anyway. And cylinder five, 280. 240, 330, 270. I'm thinking maybe if we put a new plug in that front one, maybe it's the wire too. We got over here, 270, 360, 350, dang. 314. So these two front ones are cooler than the other two on that side. And this one isn't too bad. I think we should uh, put a plug in that one. Or the wire doesn't look terrible, but I guess we could measure it for resistance. But we won't. If I had a spark plug, I'd spin it in, but I don't have any. So we're just going to call it good until we get new water pump plugs. We'll do wires at the same time. Whammy all that crap together. Maybe I'll take a peek at that awesome red distributor cap, see what that looks like inside. Because just because it's red don't mean it's any good. Power steering is a little bit stiff, but it seems like it's pretty close to full. Uh, she's in there. Don't look very good though. We ain't gonna worry about that. Not until we get it to run decent. Alright. I'm gonna pull that cap off, see what that looks like. Can't say I've ever looked inside of one of these 4.3s, but look at all those terminals. They're like three times as wide as they are in a regular V8 HEI cap. But they don't look all corroded. I mean, it's a pretty new cap. Even got the matching red rotor. And that uh, looks pretty good as well. I think we'll just throw that back together and go with plugs and wires. 
Let's not forget to hook our connector back up and our power wire. Definitely need to order some uh, tune up parts there. Hopefully, that cleans up the misfires on the cylinders. I'm going to back it outside, get some before pictures, thumbnails for the uh, YouTube because you got to have thumbnails because that's the clickbait you guys like. So, I'm going to do that quick. Got our pictures taken. And uh, of course, I was adjusting the mirror when I went to go drive down there to do that. And uh, it tore off. This thing is so hideous. It looks like it's from South Dakota with uh, no grill in it, so. I'm on meth. See if we can maybe slide that in there. I don't know. I'm guessing that clip's supposed to stay with the grill. Haven't had one of these out before. We'll figure it out, won't we, Duff? Stay hydrated. Get rid of those nasty steel wheels. See how that looks. So here's what we picked up for wheels and tires at the bar. 235-60s, the other two are 245-60s. These are off an Astro van, all-wheel drive, 94 model. But I think they're the same as like both the same vintage two-wheel drive Chevy pickups. These would bolt on there, but those wheels are hideous. Also, I threw away the center caps because these wheels are just going to scrap. 10 bucks a piece. We'll stick them on those. I think we'll try putting the 245s on the front for now. Because it needs a bigger tire in the rear. And we're not going to put the 235s on the front, 245s in the rear. She needs a 275. So let's do this. How about that? Those rallies make it look way better. Those 245s look tiny. So uh, we're gonna need to bring her down a couple of coils. She's uh, starting to look pretty decent though. Funny how wheels and tires and stance make or break your ride. I dug some beauty rings out of my stash, put some new valve stems on there, the right length ones so they stick out so you can fill your uh, tires up when they go low and not have to take the beauty rings off. Rounded up some chrome lug nuts. There was four on this side, no chrome ones on the other side. And then I usually like to put stainless, new stainless 5 16 bolts on there too, because it cleans up those rallies a bunch. Don't be like this goof and uh, not have the right length valve stems on there. You can always put those extensions on there, but they're cheesy as well. The old uh, Wranglers are pretty weather checked, so those are going to have to go as well. Dug the exhaust off the old 98 Chevy that we use as a donor at the beginning of the channel. Got a chunk of straight pipe. We'll take that out to uh, boom tube Brian and have him expand it so we can slip it over where the cataract converter was. And this thing will hopefully be a lot quieter. The rest of the exhaust looks pretty good shape. Everything looks pretty good under there other than the transmission is, is real greasy. You can see I put my hands on that greasy transfusion and slid out. I think we'll take our uh, buffing wheel strip this stuff off hopefully it doesn't ruin the paint too much maybe we should back it outside and let the sun warm that up a bit that antenna is way too big and crooked too but she'll have to do for now but yeah just some little stuff like that maybe take this busted 
valance off once we get it a little bit lower. Put a new bow tie in there. Keep picking away at it. Already looks a lot better. Matching wheels. Key. What do you guys think we should name this thing? I don't know. The saga is continuing. It won't pop off now, so I tried giving it a little gas because the guy thought it had fuel pump issues. Nothing. So I checked for spark. Nothing. We just had the distributor cap off, so I checked in there to make sure we didn't screw anything up. Everything looks good. Just kind of worn out on the uh, weights in there, but that might have been why it was running rough when we were getting on it, but didn't really see any issues there. So that ignition module, GM HEI ignition modules go bad all the time. Well, I grabbed one off the shelf. Well, this is a four prong. Turns out, because this thing's got two sets of wires coming into it, it's a five prong, which is what these later HEI distributors are. They're garbage, because they got a computer brain box or something on here that runs them. So that module will not work. And of course you can't just drop a regular small block HEI in there because those have eight points on the reluctor wheel. This has got six. I checked, made sure I had power going to the distributor. Check that, yep, we're all good there. And then online it says if you take and hook your test light up to your positive cable and then hook it up to your tack wire, every time that the ignition fires, your light should go on and off. And that'll tell you if either your pickup or your module is bad if those aren't firing. And if it is firing and you still aren't getting spark, then it's your coil, which we all know coils never freaking go bad. Unless it's on some newer late model stuff, but we don't work on that garbage. So watch this. Right there, keep an eye on this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Key is off, so it's grounding out right now. Key's on, it's dim, so now it should flash as we're cranking it over. Six times per revolution. Nothing. So now we either need an HEI module or we just go on Flea Bay and buy a whole different distributor that gets rid of that electronic crap. They're about 75 bucks. Of course, that's a week out. So, yeah, I don't have any um, 86 C10 ignition parts on the shelf. Back to the drawing board. This thing just staying hydrated over there, pal. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I guess we need to round up some more parts, but there you go how to test a GM HEI module. Usually they're just always bad, so I don't test them. It's the first time I've ever tested one, but kind of need to know if you're uh, in a pinch or you put one in and it didn't fix it. This thing, I tell you what, gonna drive me to drinking. Well, what are we gonna do now? No parts on a Sunday. Have a sandwich and think about it, I guess. So that black stuff where the custom deluxe decals used to be, emblems, whatever, it's really bothering me. I think they repainted this thing. Well, I know they repainted it, but uh, when they did it, usually these pins snap off for these emblems. So they just tried gluing them on. Apparently they didn't stick. So on this side, I tried uh, using some heat. Uh, as you can see, I kind of burned the paint a bit and it wasn't really working very well. The other side, I just took a razor blade and I figured I'd just shave off as much as I could and then we'll just get some new emblems and put on there. They ain't cheap, they're like 40 bucks a piece, but the holes are there and the damage is already done, so when I get the new ones on, that'll cover that right up. Should be all right. Do it the right way. Like, take the windshield out when you paint things. Gross. What did we get into, Duff? Where are we gonna quit with this thing? Actually, I think that's where we're gonna quit right now. We're gonna kick this thing outside until we get some ignition parts and water pump and everything else. An exhaust. Sayonara for now. It's probably gonna be a week or two till we're back, but you guys will be back in a couple minutes. 
punching out. So you got Casper, the unfriendly short bed back in here. And I think we're gonna pull that distributor out. I think it's the module that's bad. And we're just gonna eliminate all the computer stuff. I think I got an idea. Instead of just going back to that five wire module, we're gonna make it so it accepts a three wire module. So stay tuned, I'll let you know if it works or not. I'm gonna pull that module out. And you're gonna be no help. At least there's lots of room under here. Well, there is from the water pump forward. So we got the distributor out. See all that sludge under there? That tells me this engine has uh, had a lack of maintenance. But is what it is. So here's our ignition module. So the module that's in here, they call it a five wire. Weird. Two, three, makes five. This is a standard part number LX331. That's what's in here. Usually you just got one wire to power these up. You hook up to your back. Single wire. Runs everything. These things are computer controlled. And they got this four pin connector that does who knows what. And uh, to get rid of that and to go to the LX301 style like the single wires have, we need to get rid of that. Part of that is I guess I call it an electro wheel, but I think they call it a coil pickup. We need to take that one off and install this one here, which is a uh, 4P1204. This is like an 85 Caprice with a 3.8 in it. And see how that's just got two wires that hook up versus those three there. We're gonna see if this works. If not, we put it all back together and we put this new module in, but I just kinda wanna get rid of all this garbage that does who knows what. So I think we're gonna have to knock this roll pin out, pull the shaft out, and we take the screws out that hold this on there. It'd be just that easy. It's never that easy. Basically this is, it's got six stars, so every time it rotates past those, it tells that module to fire. And then you got our vacuum advance, little tabby dealio there. So, let's see if we can knock a pin out. They make punches, drifts, I don't know, I'm putting these on and off. Of course, I don't have one. Oh, this should slide off. Should. Keyword. Slide that shaft out. Maybe. What oh, holds that thing in there? Just rests in there? I suppose. Atlanta. How much further is that thing in there? Now, what holds that son of a biscuit on there? Look at that mixed up with our new one. Guess we gotta go back to where this thing used to be. I don't see any connectors, so here it goes nothing. Snap ring. Oh, there is a little tiny snap ring there. I've never had one of these out, they never go bad. Sure enough, don't lose that little guy. Now, what just went click? Uh oh, rock, some type of acorn or something. Mice duff. So now we just slide this one in there. It's only got two wires instead of three. Slide her up on her vacuum advance. Put some, I don't know, heat conductor lube whatever because lube is good the bottom here it always used to be clear i don't know what this white stuff is and one of these wires is big and one is small oh and that's that one says white and that one says green so even color coded to match i guess she's just a really snug fit maybe boot and tight slide that one over there i didn't know these things had a condenser in them Never heard of them going bad. Reassemble it, see how you took it apart. Don't forget that snap ring. I 
think I'm going to clean this shaft up a bit before we slide it in there so it goes in better. Put some lube on it. Hopefully she slides in better than it come out. Oh yeah. Little Wiener slider goes long days. That's an extra screw for the ground on that electronic control garbage. Now we need to put Brush washer on this guy. Try to line up our pinholes first, otherwise that's no bueno. Oh yeah, real good. Where's our pin at now? There it is. Which end did I demolish? That one. Where's our brass drift at? Those things are way good. On the floor where we left it. So the cam drives the S gear, and then at the bottom it's got that little slot like a screwdriver. So it drives the oil pump. So this thing's only gonna go in two different ways, so remember which way this was pointing. It was pointing at the PCV breather. I remember that when I took it apart. So now all we gotta do is put our cap and rotor back on. Obviously rotor first. Make sure we get our weights. So this is your centrifugal advance and you want to check that these bushings are tight and these weights and your springs ain't broken you can see this one's a little rusty she's been she's been wearing so the other thing is probably should have a cover to keep debris out of there where this plug used to be so i guess oh that's a oh what you could do is just cut these wires off cut this off and then uh that screw would just hold it in place. But I don't want to do that just yet because we might have to use this if this doesn't work, but it's going to work. Put our sweet red rotor back on. You line that tang up, that notch. It can only go on one way. GM made it idiot proof. So, in theory, if this works, put our cap back on, hook this up. We just got the one wire going off the bat that runs everything. 12 volt power from the key source. And we eliminated all of this just by going with a little bit older reluctor wheel. Coil pickup, whatever you call it. So I'm gonna clean the garbage out of these uh, cam gear teeth. Maybe clean the rest up, nah. We're gonna go drop it in, point in the same direction, throw our cap on, hook our wires back up. Hopefully she works. Always brush your teeth, kids. Or you'll look like you're from South Dakota even if you're not from there. Like I said, PCV breathers right here, so we want to aim this thing a little bit to that side of it, and as we drop it in, the rotation of those gears are gonna go spinner over there. Oh, how chewy is our distributor gasket? Or non-existent, I should say. I suppose I'm gonna scrape that gasket off with our super scraper. Hit me up if you need one. And uh, drop that gasket on there. I got one of those in my stash. Because now was the time. New gasquito from our stash. Because there is oil up there. And uh, you think you got a rear main seal leak. And you go through all that work pulling transmission in to fix that seal. And it still leaks. Don't be a wank. Check your distributor gasket. Let's see how much of this we can not drop down into the crankcase. We're going to get all up inside it. Real nice and deep black. That's it, boy. Get in there nice and deep line. So we got it all nice and cleaned up. You know, I said that oil pressure gauge wasn't working. Well, this is the sender, and that wire is about snapped off from rubbing into the firewall. So I wonder if that ain't our issue. It certainly can't help. Let's uh, get this thing stabbed in there. Oh, gotta get my back in advance up to where it needs to be. Nailed it. Get yourself one of these fancy distributor wrenches. They're nice. Tough. Go grab me that distributor cap. I'll leave it just a little bit loose so we can adjust the timing. Hook up our vacuum advance. And once we get that cap on, let's hook up our six wires. Get your timing order correct. Number one is like straight ahead on this thing. Hook this up to the cap. Hook our power wire up to the battery. And 
Boom. And boom goes the dynamite. So this cap, it's got a notch there. The body has got a, on the distributor, has got a notchy there. So you go square pig, square hole. Just like that game that they gave you in the ninth grade. Let's see if you're gonna go on to the 10th grade. Get on there. Don't make me get a hammer. Put our quarter turn. Hold down screw dealio my bobber thing digger. Who danks? On module wires. Only go one way. And then hook it up to the battery. Like I said, this is number one point straight forward. So we gotta find number one. One, six, five, four. Two. Usually if you're lucky, the wires are so crusty that they uh, only go on one way. Let's snug you up just a bit. Just enough so she's got a little resistance so it can't spin on its own. So there you have it. Provided this works, how to convert your garbage computer controlled 86 carbureted HEI distributor to the good old fashioned one wire. We only needed one part to do it. That silly pickup wheel. It only took about a half hour. Oh shoot, this thing says 23 minutes. Yeah, about a half hour. Now the moment of truth. <laughs> Is it gonna work, Duff? Didn't take us many tools either. Oh, never mind. there's tools all over the bench. Oh. No bueno. Maybe she needs some gas. What a gorgeous night. No crickets. Just wait, one will start chirping now. What do you think? Is it gonna go? Fixed it, kind of. Now we gotta address the carbonator. Awesome, our one wire contraption worked. Using all GM parts. I was gonna just stab a $75 Chinese distributor in it, but we gotta take that distributor out anyway. So I just don't like the Chinese stuff because if that goes bad, who knows what kind of guts are in there. Probably the same stuff that's in here. That battery is about hatter. Definitely need some more battery sponsors. Nancy's running pretty thin around here. Look at how good that bed floor is. It's a rain gauge. Why are we not getting fuel up there? Didn't we dump six gallons in this thing? Pretty sure we did. What's our sweet clear hose saying? Saying it's got fuel up there. Maybe all this conglomerate trash is... Why? Why would it? Do you have wires on a carburetor other than for the choke? Nine o'clock. We better get this thing running. We're gonna lose the shot for sure, Duff. Definitely not getting fuel now. But we got spark. And uh, definitely need to hook up the battery charger. So why are we not getting fuel? I think I'm gonna look, do a quick Google, figure out what the French this wire does. I know on some lawnmowers, they got like an electric solenoid in here. So when you cut, turn this key off, you know, cause they're gravity feed, and it stops the fuel from going into the engine so it doesn't wash out your cylinders and fill your crankcase full of gas. I'm not sure what that is. And then again, I'm not sure that this fuel pump is doing fuel pump things either. And that battery is not doing battery things. But I'm sticky and hot and sweaty, so uh, shutting her down. Cyclops, go to bed. But we did get this thing to get spark again. Waited a few days for parts. Got a bunch more parts. Got some non-flexi hoses and a belt. Plugs, wires. Oh, and a muffler and a pipe. 
and some wiper blades so we could figure out why this thing's not getting fuel and waiting on our water pump yet. This thing might live again. It'll live again, definitely. All right, sandwich time. Well, we're back for more fun with Casper, the unfriendly short bed. Duff just wants to take her for a rip. Hey, we got our new pudding swag in the mail. So we're gonna be repping that. Gotta wear it in. She's a little stiff yet. But yeah, pretty good stuff. Other than it's black. I mean, come on, dude. Offer us some different colors. Get a little diversity in your shirt selection. Thanks for getting them out to us though, Ashley. You're the best. You guys keep an eye on this fuel inlet. We know if we're getting fuel. I bet we are. We are not. So, where are we not getting fuel? Guess I'll pull the fuel line off down here, this clear son of a gun. Maybe we'll put a inline clickety clack in there. And see if it runs then. So I am guessing that 4.3 fuel pump is not the same as a small block. And I don't have one of those on hand. Here, clickety clack. Oh, we gotta put her the wrong way. The right way? Whichever way. This end's coming from our tank, that end's going to our carburetor. I'm just gonna slide in there real quick, cut it, put a couple hose clamps on it, not spill any gas. Wow. Freaking clamp on first, dum dum. Uh oh. I think we're gonna need some more hose. That's what she said. <laughs> I just had an epiphany. We're gonna take this clear line off and leave this chunk of clear in, and we're gonna replace this with some black stuff that's longer. And so when we do figure this out, we can just take the black stuff and bypass this. And we got all black hose on there. Not this clear aquarium stuff. Oh, for cheese and rice. The smog pump wasn't on here to have more. Let's just go ahead and delete that too while we're in here. There. Never use black holes. This probably stuff stuff probably says don't use for fuel. But you can't read it because the fuel laid it off there. Look at this stuff. Fuel line. Weird. Oh man, I got my pudding shirt all dirty laying on the floor. And don't use ginormous clamps like this. This is for like a heater hose. Right? Even that heater hose fitting is smaller. Now we need one more hose clamp because she stole this one that was on the aquarium line. Okay, we're just gonna leave this one super, super duper long. Yeah, we're gonna have to trim it, Never mind. You don't wanna get caught in our smog pump belt. Now if we ground this, Why is it leaking? Surely it cannot be the aquarium hose. Now let's see if we get fuel leaking up here. A controlled leak, maybe. Yes. She's still leaking down here. I'm sure my Chinesium clickety clack combined but the aquarium always can't be the problem. So there's air in there. Watch when we turn this on. It seems like it's pulling air. It's cavitating. I don't know. Doesn't seem like it's a steady flow. Granted, these electric pumps are meant to push not pull. I'm gonna go crawl underneath and see if there's a spot we can put this pump where it's pushing fuel not pulling it. I think that fuel pump's shot. That's that's what I'm thinking. So now I'm gonna go underneath 
and probably on that rubber chunk of hose we put over there I'm gonna put our electric inline pump in there so that hopefully it's downhill and that thing functions we'll see if we can't run it that way I think that pump is shot though how can we test that mechanical pump guess we do have that boat tank right there maybe we'll try that first just to test that mechanical pump because then if we know that's bad we can just kick her outside until we get a mechanical pump Where is it spilling from? The puke out of the bottom of the fuel pump? All right, problem solved. Come off of there now. So we just had a major breakthrough. I had uh, the boat tank, that boat tank, sitting up here on the radiator support, hooked it up to the fuel pump and I was getting a major leak, major leak. So I crawl underneath, and there's a weep hole on these fuel pumps, just gushing out of that. So you know the diaphragm shot. It does, in fact, need a fuel pump. I don't know how it worked before, like maybe it would just work for a little while, but yeah, that fuel pump, she's wasted. So I guess, you know, we could put that electric pump in line down there and then just bypass that fuel pump so it's not leaking. I'm surprised it wasn't leaking when we were running it that way. How does that? It doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe there's just enough fuel in the system, but yep, we need a fuel pump. So I mean, we could go through the work of bypass and all that just to make it run and drive for what we need to do, but it's getting a mechanical pump on it because I hate electric pumps. So we're just gonna go do other stuff for now until we get mechanical pump on hand, and then we're gonna get done what we need to get done. We're just kicking her outside. Still waiting on a water pump too. A lot of pump issues on here. Hopefully the windshield washer pump is good. What other pumps are on this thing? Air pump, that's going away. I guess we could take care of that. So, we finally figured it out. Don't worry, Greta. That's just water. That's not fuel going into the floor drain, into our properly maintained floor drain. How dare you! So, we got new radiator hoses, but we can't put those on. That would be a waste to put those on for the water pump comes in. We also got a belt, but it would be a waste so the water pump comes in. I guess we could do a smog pump delete kit on it. But really, I'm not too concerned about that because it's, it's, it's just there. It's fine. We'll take the belt off when we do the other stuff and we'll just leave it off because it's plumbed into things and such. Hey, if anybody's got a flat screwdriver that's a twin to this guy, Made by Channel Lock, it's that size. Let me know. These four brothers and sisters are missing him. I don't know where it went. I think it's in the Rambler or that Cadillac ate it, but that was my favorite flat screwdriver. And it's gone forever. Aaron Hernandez. So if you got one of those and you're willing to part with it, I'll even, I'll pay you way more than fair market value, but it's gotta be a twin of that. It's gotta be gray and black and be that channel lock brand. I don't know a good way without getting a million emails of people answering uh, what was the first year of the GM V8, not GM, Chevrolet V8. By the way, it was 1918, not 1955, like you're thinking. Look it up. More useless information from Morski. Whoever buys Morski decal pack, four pack for 10 bucks shipped, send it PayPal or snail mail in the next month so from wherever this airs I'm guessing like this is probably gonna come out the 20th of September so from the 20th of September to the 20th of October if you buy Morski repair decal set you're gonna get thrown in a drawing for this email me Morski repair at gmail.com we'll uh, set you up with how to get your decals mailed out one lucky winner is gonna get this I don't know if you're lucky or not. If you don't want it, that's great. Sell it on the interwebs. Never mind that. New water pumps here. Should take a look at it. See if it kind of looks like what we need. I'm guessing it's gonna look like a small block Chevy one. Even though they're not the same part number. It's good enough for the girls I go with. So you got the petcock cracked and 
I don't know, there's supposed to be like a drain valve that it comes out of down here. Well, it don't come out of that. It just kind of goes everywhere. Some people were talking about coolant, critters, so on and so forth. I've been around dogs and trash like this my whole life. Never once has a critter gone anywhere close to that, except for that stupid cricket. I'd like to see him jump in there and drown. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe cats like it. We never had cats around. Maybe that's why, because they drank all our coolant and died. But Duff has zero interest in the coolant. We keep an eye on him. Maybe if we take the cap off, she'll really gush out of there. Probably not. Probably just wasn't any in there to start. Maybe that's why it wasn't leaking, because there wasn't any in it. I'll probably just set the time lapse up, because I'm sure all you guys are putting water pumps on before. Uh, no need to see me struggle through that. All right, grab a sandwich, get after it. Judging by the mess on the floor, we're gonna need a coolant sponsor. Pretty straightforward. I think we're so dang close. We got the belt off and everything. We're just gonna get rid of that smog pump. I don't really know what that thing does. Just pumps air into the exhaust or something. Ah, uh, then we gotta plug all of these. Son of a biscuit. Yeah, never mind. We'll put it back on there as a plug, if nothing else. We'll get out the super scraper. Uh, link to those in the description or pricing and so on and so forth for this application I'm gonna use uh, the SS one the original big wide wooden handled one scrape that up I don't know if I'm gonna put anything on the new gaskets I guess I've never had problems just slapping water pump gaskets on some guys say you gotta use silicone some guys use some other whatever I just stick them in there haven't had a problem we'll uh, slide that on there and you go back to the other, still got to take that lower radiator hose off. But I'm just going to wait for that to get done dripping so we can move the pan over here and try to catch a little bit more coolant. I'm doing a real bad job of that. And then, yeah, we'll be slamming her back together. Well, the power steering belt looks like new. So we're going to slam that back on. Even though I think it is a Napa brand. Dang it. Which I think they're just gates anyway, aren't they, Napa Todd? The old serpentine, she's a little cracked out. And uh, you don't want to be cracked out. So, do a little bit of prepping, slam her back together. So another one of my weird quirks, both the gaskets come with that extra hole. So on the water pump, that one doesn't have that hole. So I trim them off, because I'm a weirdo like that. Don't forget to put that plug in there too for the heater hose that we don't have. Or you're gonna have a mess when you fill it up. So comment down below. What do you do with these gaskets? Do you just slam them in like me? Or do you got some professional cocktail secret stuff that you put on there? Or just some good old right stuff? Maybe I'll give it a try sometime. Maybe it'll leak on me this time and you can tell me how terrible of a mechanic I am. You will anyway, let's be honest. I know I should paint it first, but last time we painted something was the wheels on the Rambler. And look how that went, they didn't fit.
in there pretty tight. Use my handy dandy gear inch stud extractor. These things are sweet. Spin them right out. Sometimes. I don't know how to grab that one. Oh, with the French toast. I think it just didn't like the, uh, oh, not down the floor. I think it just didn't like the ratcheting action of the impact. Beats the crap out of using the locking players, though. I need to figure out why that plug don't come. Should have taken this off before we took it off the engine. That would have been smart. Got it. We just got to put some pipe dope on it. The pipe kind, not that kind of pipe either. Slam that sucker in there. Got the new 275 60s on the back, 245 60s on the front. Duff identified an issue. It's way too farkin' high. We'll address that. Got her full of coolant. Use that sweet coolant funnel. It's got a little elbow adapter so that the funnel don't sit like this. It sits vertical, so that's pretty handy. And we just uh, need a fuel pump so that we can drive it. Well, hey, looky here. Finally got our Pierce fuel pump. America, look at that. Looks just like a small block Chevy one, but it's mounted upside down. I'm gonna go get one off a small block Chevy and put it next to it. Cause I keep those on hand and that would have really pissed me off if we couldn't just whammy that on there. The only difference is probably that, oh no, the steel line goes in a different spot. Small block Chevys, they shoot out the side like a so. Either way, we got it now. I like how they label it in, like duh. Uh, we're probably not going to run the fuel in for beastly 4.3 through a quarter inch fuel line. We need that 3 eighths inch hog to suck it all in. All right. We're going to run that thing in. Where you been? You're all wet swam, donkey. Oh, just out running around in the grass looking for wabbits. Had to uh, park it at the hill for a while, let the water run out, because this box, she's tight. Snack time? You wanna open that hood for me? Oh, I'll get this one then. Oh, you did open it! What a guy. What a guy. You wanna open it the rest of the way? Oh, you're taking a break. All right, I got this. Jiggle the handle. Oh, these hood hinges are so much better than the 73 to 79s. So, Let's uh, pop that fuel pump off. Man, that thing looks like a bugger to get off. Awesome. Tech tip of the day, always take the line off first. That way, you're not fighting it later. Can't even get the line wrench in here. Cheese and rice. General Motors, what were you thinking here? Got a great design with the small black Chevy fuel pump. Uh, all right. Or break out the fancy tools. I've only used these things about four times in my life. This is probably the fourth time. These crow's foot that are uh, kind of like a line wrench. These things are awesome. They make them. Someday you're gonna be like, oh man, Morsky told me about these. Should have used them. Somebody else is gonna comment, yeah, I got those and I never use them either. Cool tools you rarely use. That's the title of this segment. Pretty bad when the uh, death of the smog pump is due to the fuel pump. Let's 
supercharger delete. So here's your other tech tip. See these two bolts? Bolted to the front of the block down there by the harmonic balancer. And if you run an engine without, I think it's the top one in, it's gonna leak oil. Cause that goes into the crankcase where the shaft runs off the camshaft to run your fuel pump. Tech tip, if you get a longer bolt than what's in there, it's just a real short 3 8 bolt. You got to have a bolt in there when you're not using a bracket or anything down there for power steering or alternator or, in this case, a uh, supercharger. But you got to have a bolt in there so that oil doesn't run out. But you get a longer bolt than that and take that bolt out, and then you can hold the fuel pump shaft in while you're trying to slide it in there. So useless knowledge for you. I usually don't do it, but you can do it that way. Because sometimes that uh, shaft's a little bit tricky to get her. Get the pump arm snuck in in front of it and the bolts lined up. If you know, you know. Oh, son of a biscuit we got it. So we should probably put a bolt back in that one. And then this one doesn't need a bolt. Actually, you can't. Hold the fuel pump rod on. Yeah, those bolt holes don't line up with that fuel pump rod. On the infamous 4.3, it looks like the rod comes up way over here as opposed to down here. I'm gonna clean that gasket surface off. With the super scraper, the best freaking scrapers ever. Here's our gasket. Our pumps look the same. I'm gonna find a new chunk of line. I'm gonna use that clamp again and that quarter inch bolt. Let's be honest, I'm probably gonna just put that whole line back on there, but she is an AC, so I'm guessing that is an original one. One of those two holes, probably that one, is the one where all the fuel is leaking out of. But it's weird, uh, small block Chevy's mounted this way. These four threes are mounted kind of kitty wampus like this. Instead of a three ace bolt with a, what, seven sixteenths head, they've got a five sixteenths bolt with a half inch head. So just a normal five sixteenths bolt holding it on there. More worthless knowledge for you. So the old bolts had uh, blue Loctite on them. Never seen that on a fuel pump. Figured if it lasted this long, we might as well stick with it. Because I would sure hate for these things to either back out or leak. Especially that inside one, because that thing is a real treat. So if you don't know how a mechanical fuel pump works, there's a diaphragm in here, and you got fuel sitting here. And that diaphragm goes up and down, and that's what pushes fuel up to the carburetor. Pumps it up there. Fuel, pump. And the way that diaphragm is pumped, by this arm here. This arm is pushed by a fuel pump push rod. Push rod runs on an eccentric, which is kind of an egg-shaped lobe, on a camshaft. So every time that thing goes around, pumps on this fuel pump. So, the more you know. And you want to make sure that that fuel pump rod is pushing right on this. If you get it off to the side, it's kind of hard to do, but people do it. Don't be those people. <sighs> Even the easy one is not being easy. All right, spun the engine over, and that shaft is indeed up, so it's not like that should be interfering, but it seems like it is. There, hit it right on the first shot, right? 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 I think we should crank it over and see if she's pumping fuel. Not that there's really much left to do but put the line on. I've never had one not pump fuel, but this thing is such a bugger. I want to make sure it's pumping fuel. And of course, I left the key on the last time I was out here. So the battery's stone cold Steve Austin dead. Give her a little tickle of hot sauce. You guys uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, 
Uh, judging by how wet the inner fender is, we got fuel. So let's stick her back together. Thanks to Keith Benoit. He's usually our lubricant sponsor. It's been a lot of Croya lately. But uh, he sent us that booster pack. Freaking awesome. Thanks, Keith. Duff, is it going to start? Is that fuel pump going to work? Do you like my new hot sauce bottle? It's got 23 flavors. Ouch, that was my head on the hood hinge. Hood latch. Words are hard. Don't tip over. You know it's going to go, don't you? Well, check her out. Might need to give her some more hot sauce, get her primed up a bit. Hold that thought. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Silly electronic quadra pukes. If it was running off the bowl, this is in fact the bowl. It's gotta be. I'm sure that's the vent. It should have ran longer than that. I know these four threes are powerhouses and they use up fuel like a small block, but. Well, it seems like it only wants to run long enough as I fill the bowl. So I guess I'm gonna crack that line again. Let's see if we're pumping up here. All right, look for a leak where the guy put the tape on. I was not the guy. We'll even put a rag, nice dry rag, and we'll see if it's wet when we get done. And that way we don't soak the top of the engine in fuel, right? Brilliant! Brilliant! As you can see, we are not getting fuel. I'm gonna go blow air in the tank. Try to prime the system, see what happens. Not getting any fuel up there when I blow in the tank either. Well, I don't know what we jarred Lewis, but we got fuel now. I took all three of those lines on the cross member out of there, and uh, we're just going to ditch those other two. Yeah, you two. Game over. And uh, blew air through that. I'm good to go. So then I really just hammed it going in there. I mean, I gave it everything, and it was a lot. Don't worry about that sound. That is not fuel going in the Ford drain. Even Duff has a look of concern. So I'm going to grab a couple of zip ties and tie that line back up to that cross member. And then we're going to see if we can't get fuel further up the system. I'm about running out of gas on this project. Knee slapper. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give her the sauce again. Hopefully I can hear it blasting out. Found a wet spot. Now we'll tighten up Mr. Hose Clamp. Mr. Hardline. And get Mr. Rag out of there. And get Mr. OG Hot Sauce. Doing his thing here. Hopefully no sparks come out of the exhaust or matching the gas tank. Boom, boom. Matching the gas tank. Boom, boom. Duff. You taking a nap on the job or what? Are we gonna stay running? I think we finally got her to lick. Not a bad night. Lights working. Got her running pretty good. Did a anti Greta kit on it. What a disaster. I mean, thought it was a fuel pump, which I think that was bad because it was leaking out that whatever orifice thinger. Weep pole? It was the weep pole. 
And then we chased our tails because I hooked up a line backwards and blown in the tank. It was filling up charcoal canister. Then I think the choke wire wasn't hooked up because it's some goofy connector and I don't know if it's broken or they swapped carburetors or what, but it doesn't. And it's a big spade oddball thing that I don't have to just snip this off and put on there. Timing was a little bit off, but it was kind of my fault. I'm not going to time it until it runs decent. And yeah, we had a light out. So four hours to fix a light bulb. Like Finnegan said, tail light was out, so put a supercharger on it. <laughs> we took a supercharger off. Okay. I'm gonna have a sandwich. What do we got here? Casseroles, stones, friendlies, sandwiches. We were saving those, those are collectors. Old style ham and cheeses. Some points. We're gonna do with with a Wibby. Light shine rattler. These things. These things are delicious. Somebody's coming from Colorado through the greater Dakota and wants to bring me some uh, Wibbies. I'm cool with that. Oh, that's a that's a good beer. What are these guys out of anywho? Wibby, if you want to send me some beer, I'm down with that. Never waste a Wibby. Recycle Longmont, Colorado. Wibby. Brewing Company. So if you live around Longmont, go hit these guys up. Free in Colorado. Just go buy some and enjoy them. Alright. I gotta do some cleaning up. This is a disaster. Duff! What are you doing over there? Looking for birds? Guess what? This thing sits too high. I measure uh, 33 inches-ish to the center of the wheel wall back here and 31-ish in the front. And that's just, that's just too much room in there. So we're gonna fix that. And the good folks over at uh, DJM Suspension, they're helping us out. They're picking a guy up, setting his rig down. So we're gonna do a flip kit in the back. We got these brutes, similar to what we put on the 70 GMC. If you wanna check it out, how we do this, Go check that video out. We got shock extensions, we got part of our flip kit here, bump stops, hardware for the shock extensions. We'll use our U bolts again, hopefully, they survive. So, we got to pull the wheels off, we got to drop our leaf springs down, got to pull our shocks off, got to unhook our brake hose, got to unhook our park brakes. Let's just pretend like those are going to get unhooked properly, but we know they're going to get cut. And we also got to unhook the drive shaft. Oh, and the breather tube going up to the frame rail so that we don't spit out our axle seals. Right, Duffers? Duff likes slam pickups too. So uh, we're going to get after it. Oh, I got the old diff out. I couldn't get this bolt to come out, so we're gonna have to do a little work there. The impact doesn't like the rubber situation, just kind of rattles it back and forth, so put a big ratchet on there. Look how rusty these things are. The uh, brake line fought us. Somebody's replaced that before. Had to put a locking pliers on there to get that loose because I just wanted to strip with the line wrench. Wish we had a new hose for it, but we don't. And uh, the breather hose, that's clearly plugged up. So yeah, get these shocks off and clean out that vent tube. Well, Dusky, I think that's a good uh, spot to quit tonight. All right, you go uh, chase stuff in the darkness. I'll be here enjoying my Wibby. So while he runs around out there looking for the boogeyman, I'll give you guys an update here. As you can see, we got the rear end kind of in place here. We got our flip kit installed, U-bolt snugged up. You are supposed to take the spring pack bolt out and flip it around the other way, but I can tell you how that's gonna go. Those bolts hardly ever come out without breaking. And I don't know if I got a new one on hand. So we just skip that step, it'll be fine. 
this spring bolt up here, I found a neat trick on the interwebs. So what's happening is there's a steel bushing inside of the rubber bushing, and that was spinning, so I couldn't get that bolt out. So I torched the head off, right next to that gas tank, don't worry. If there would have been a fire, I'd have had the camera on. Oh, oh. So you torch the head off, and then you just start stacking washers, tighten that bolt up, tighten that nut up, and it pulls the shank of the bolt out of there, and then you just, once you run out of threads, you back it out, throw another bushing on there, tighten it up, run out of threads, back it up, throw a bigger bushing in there. Worked pretty good. Other than now I gotta find two four and a half inch by nine sixteenths bolts, which I don't have. I have zero nine sixteenths bolts around. So that's our big hang up there, and the holes for those springs don't really line up because the shackles are tipped back there, so it's kind of a two-man job. I was gonna put it with some ratchet straps, pull it ahead, I got some half-inch bolts sticking there, but I thought, why go through all that? Just wait till we get the bolts, and then we'll snug it up, so. Once we get those bolts in there, we can hook the drive shaft up, the brakes up, bleed them, put our shocks on there. We got new shocks to put on. Still gotta put the shock extension kit in. We gotta drill a hole for the shock extension. Oh, and I uh, knocked the old bump stops off and put new bump stops on, and I put it right in between the rivets, which is, doesn't look like it's in the right spot, so I'm probably gonna have to drop it down and drill a new hole, but such is life. But we're done for the night. Swept up the floor. I gotta go to Indiana for the corporate gig tomorrow, so yay. I guess I've never been to Indiana, so I can't bash you guys, but. All right, we'll get back. Hopefully we'll have some bolts. Whammy this thing together. And then go uh, put some new tubular control arms and drop springs in the front. That'll be fun. All the new parts. What do you think? Shut her down for the night? Keep kind of dark. Half moon? 65% moon. All right, rambling. Look at that new grill from the junkyard. Thanks to the flannel man himself. Used old stock. So we got this uh, fancy online auto supply tubular nut kit in several different sizes. So, uh, what do you those are? Eighth inch? Mm, yeah. Or do we try? What even tells you the whole size? Well, this is for an eighth inch. All of these for eighth inch stud. Maybe we should get serious and measure this. Point. One nine. So what's that? Three sixteenths? One nine, yeah, a little over three sixteenths. One eight seven five is three sixteenths. One eight seven five? Yep. And these are point two three, so just under quarter. Three sixteenths stud seven thirty seconds old. I don't know. Oh yeah, it does, it does grab her. So that's the drawer that's gonna be empty first. I think you just wham bam them in the hole. No regrets. Hey, what is this one? Oh, this? Uh-huh. That's my credo, no regrets. Mm -hmm. Snap! Oh yeah! Oh yeah, that's not coming off. This is the double D, <laughs> custom deluxe. This is, is this the triple D? This is Casper. Casper, because I already got white lightning. Yeah, that worked out pretty good. Right? Mine's the crap out of taking the fender off. Right. Mine's broke on the one side, but I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna glue it. MIA a stud, so I'll just keep washing around it gently. Why would you wash it? You're right. I just wash the bottom side. That's what gets dirty. I thought I could just like scrape this glue off. No way. You, even with the eraser, you couldn't get it off. Shoot. So it's, that's why I bought these and like it's almost oh they like tried your thing and I'm on. Oh I gave you that one, right? Did you yeah, grab it? Yep. Oh. Yeah, that worked really good. It's too shiny, but Well. Ran to the big city and of course they got five inch bolts or four inch bolts. So I got both. Not a lot of options for 916 bolts. We're gonna have to go with a little bit longer one. It'll be okay. And as you saw, Chin assisted in installing the emblems. They're a little bit too shiny, but yeah, Duff isn't impressed either. 
it'll get dulled out like the rest of it. So now I think I'm gonna get a ratchet strap and uh, try to pry on the back of the leaf spring towards the front with uh, no assistance from you, I'm sure. So we can line up that hole in that spring because the way the shackle's sitting, it's gotta come down, so. Should be entertaining to see. It's getting nippy out at night, though. We're gonna have to hook the heater up and Rex. Anybody know what this is? It's an oxygen tank from a World War II airplane. I'm a hoarder of these. Got like, I don't know, what do we got? Eight, ten of them now. Everybody made them into air tanks and air compressors and stuff. They're uh, aluminum, and then these strips are stainless, so guys can weld to them. I'm gonna cut the brackets off, throw it in my pile. Air tanks for airbag stuff, or air brake stuff, or fuel tank for a hot rod. They were this cool yellow originally. And there should be some oxygen writing or such on there. More useless information you didn't need to know. Ooh, and we got some new 15 by eight steel wheels because the last ones went with the uh, Rambler. So we gotta have those on hand. Dual bolt pattern, four and a half and four and three quarter. And we just need to find some scabby 275 60s to throw on them just in case. And no, we're not painting them red. Get a ratchet strap in here or what? Pretty much got this rear end install wrapped up. You can see our new bump stops, new shocks. There's our shock extensions. Basically, it just relocates the shock from up here where these bolts are to down here. Had to ream out the hole a little bit for that. Had to get creative with a ratchet strap and a pry bar, and then I stuck a couple of bolts up here to get this all lined up. Didn't go too bad. You can see this bolt's a little bit short. Of course, I use a long one on the undersides. So it's a little bit long. Breather hose is hooked up, brakes are hooked up and bled, drive shaft's hooked up, pretty much wrapped up back here other than uh, I gotta tie up what's left of the park brake cable. So we got everything to come apart reasonably well. Those bolts going through the crossover, they're kind of a bugger to get at and they're really tight. And these two were pretty rusty. Had to put heat to both of them. And of course this one was kind of wanting to round off. So instead of a three quarter, pounded a 18 millimeter on it, and got it off. So we'll probably put a new half inch fine thread nut on that. But before that, I'm gonna chase some threads on it. We got our new lower control arm sitting here. Got our other Upper lower control arm sitting on the bench, toolbox, bunch of dink, that thing. Got our grease jerks in. Got our uh, pivot points all greased. We did have to stick the ball joint in the upper, so got that bolted in there and then grease both the ball joints. Yeah, we're ready to start sticking them back together once I get those threads cleaned up. And Duff has lost interest. Yep, he's sad because the dog days of summer are about over. All right.
I'm gonna chase some threads. Duff's gonna go chase some rabbits. So we got the driver's side pretty much wrapped up. They don't have any provision for mounting the clamp on the brake hose, so I just zip tied that. A steel zip tie would be better if there was such a thing. I think there is, but I don't have any. Grease tie rod end. Like I said, greased everything before we put it together on the control arms. There's a bushing in the shock. I got put a KYB gas adjust on the front here. Just a stock dimension shock. Looks like it's gonna work all right. We'll see. Uh, I did have to push the bushing out, the metal part of the bushing, in the lower end of the shock. Upper part stayed the same, obviously, but that bolt's a little bit bigger than what the standard bolt was. So, just went in the press, took two sockets, bigger one, smaller one, pressed that metal bushing out, rubber one still in there. Put the brake line up. Uh, to leave it all apart, because once we get the other side together like this, I'm going to do a little playing around with the sway bar. I think it says to take it loose at those D clamps there, and then adjust the rubber before clamping it in place or something like that so i guess we'll do that you got to set it at ride height when you do that too so we'll have to put the jack stands underneath the control arms when we do that but other than that she's about ready that's how rusty this thing is yeah uh, dust covers dust shields for the disc brakes are uh lightweight so are the inner fenders that's pretty common on these things now to go to the other side, and oh yeah, we got to bleed brakes too, because when we had that unhooked, all the fluid ran out. Might have been a better idea to just take the caliper off and lay that over there, but whatever. We love bleeding brakes. That's what we do for a living here. All right, guess we'll go do the other side. Got the uh, passenger side all slammed back together. Ready to stick some wheels on. Duff's ready to go for a ride. So uh, I'm gonna slam these wheels on, get her on the ground, snug up those sway bar bolts, and then we gotta clean up the park brake cable that I cut off, cause we don't want a dragon. And then put the back wheels on them. Well, we can go for a ride, provided we can get exhaust on, or psh, let's be honest. Exhaust or no exhaust. We're going for a ride. Let's do this. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm ready for cooler weather. What do you say, Duff? Oh, 
Duff don't care about the weather. He just wants all the, the poops. Come here. Come up here. Show him, show him all the poops you found today. Look at, look at that nice deer poop. Ugh. We got her on the ground, didn't we, Duff? So I did some measuring, and I think it come down two. I don't know. It's got to settle. It only came down. Let me look at my maths. Uh, so it came down like six inches in the back, but only came down like three in the front. I'd like to see it come down like another two inches. According to the body line, it's a little bit higher in the back. So to me, looks like it's still got to go down more in the front, but it is what it is. I think we can drive her out. I need to clean up the floor and maybe we'll bring it in, wash it. Just kidding, we don't wash anything. But yeah, she's ready for a test drive. What do you say, Dufsky? Take her for a rip? Up some more. Alright. This thing sat overnight. I didn't leave it on the charger overnight because my charger came over on the Mayflower. It's ready fast. It's the Marquette ready fast. Thing's freaking awesome, but if you left it on overnight, it would either smoke the battery or burn the whole shop down. And uh, if we're gonna lose the shop, burning it down is probably the way to go, but not quite yet. Look who got a bath last night. Yeah, you did. So is this thing's gonna run today? Yeah? All right, well, let's go check it out. Let's go for a ride. Maybe. This is it gonna start? What do you think? Okay. No comment today. Oh, son of a biscuit. Ow. That's what I think too. Maybe we got a bad connection. Yeah, because now we got nothing. Just play around with that. Silly side posts. Silly side posts. Yeah. What do you think, Dofsky? She gonna go now? The old quarter puke pump. Quarter pump. That's what we should start calling them. Whoa! What was that? They used to have exhaust, I know. You're just wound up today. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, good enough to take her for a test drive anyway. What do you think? What do you think? You just want belly rubs. Load up. Oh, square body life. What's the trick on those door latches? Did anybody look that up yet?
wire on the carburetor if that'll help. 40 45 is about all we can do. Brakes work good though. We made it duff. Too much advance, so we turn the distributor clockwise. Let's see if that choke stayed on. Oh, it's open. Hmm. So that wasn't the issue, maybe. maybe the plugs are just that loaded up. Yeah, they don't look good. What does white mean? She's running lean. Yeah, we should probably stick some plugs in. I don't usually see this on automotive engines, usually on snowmobiles where you got multiple carburetors, but like this bank was pretty lean and that bank was not so much. Two of the plugs over there were pretty loose too. Plug wires didn't look so bad, but we had them, so we stuck them on. Think she's gonna run better now, Duffers?
Listen to that big lopey cam in the old 4.3. You know what that means. Carburetor time. Look at this. Spun the uh, fuel inlet out. There should be a filter in there. No filter. So, I'm sure no trash went through that thing. But here's my resolution. I got this floater quadra puke that I just throw on stuff because I know it works. The fuel inlet comes in a little bit different spot. That's why I took the uh, filter inlet fitting off the other one. I was thinking it was longer. That's eh, not. So it's all just moved over a bit here, but there was some, uh, I don't know if it's EGR probably right here. Big old canister was in the way, so we uh, deleted that. Keep it on the DL. It's not exactly street legal. Took the restrictor plate off, give the Red Dragon a little more juice. But uh, let's keep that on the down low. This is not exactly street legal. We don't get full throttle play. It should go back quite a bit further, but we can address that if it works. That's how they had their spring hooked up, so we're just leaving it. Nice part about this Triple 400 is their electronic kickdown, your worthless information for the day, and the kickdown is on the throttle pedal, so they don't have a TV cable like a 700R4, a kickdown like a turbo 350 or 200 or whatever up here, so didn't have to deal with that. But yeah, got our vacuum advance hooked up. So, let's see if it runs any better. Probably give her a little hot sauce first. Firing orders, right? I got a huge vacuum leak somewhere, maybe. Maybe advance that a bit. think of Casper. So we've been driving this thing to work for a few days. Probably got close to 100 miles on it. And uh, yeah, she ain't too bad of a rig. Should we test her out, take her on the road, Duff? Here's a few kinks we got to work out. I'd like to find a tailgate, I'd like to find a factory sport bumper. 
I'll just go over those as we go down the road. Need to find a seat. I think it's blown out. If we ever find time, we could fix some rust. I don't think the speaker's hooked up. The fan works, but I don't get any air to blow out. So I don't know if there's a mouse nest in there or the doors and the vents ain't working. Mirror, need one of them. We still need to adjust that mirror. Nice to find a windshield. You know what, overall ain't a bad pickup. That seat belt buzzer, that's gotta go. Need to find a carburetor with an electric choke. She's a little cold blooded. And I only get half throttle on this one due to the geometry. So we need to fix that too. Ride's pretty good. Well, I mean, this seat sucks. Like I'm sitting on the floorboard. So there ain't a lot of padding. So I think if we address that, that would help on the whole ride. So there you go. I think a body mount snapped off because it was laying in my driveway. Need to get an alignment. It is kind of pulled to the right a little bit, but we got an appointment set up for that. We had Boom Tube Brian build us a cataract, Cadillac converter delete. Just let a chunk of pipe in there so it's nice and quiet. Tranny shift's good. I got a fuel sending unit here. Hopefully that fixes the fuel gauge because the fuel gauge does not work to fill it up with fuel. Gotta find some saddles and some straps for the fuel tank as well. We should just do all that at once so we pull the fuel tank out. Temp gauge is pegged at 330 degrees. It's 4.3. It chooches some white smoke when you start it, so I'm thinking valve guides, but it's also got some blow by. Ain't really worth opening up. It seems like it's got a ton of oil pressure, but then other times it doesn't, so I think it's in the gauge. Like right now it says it has 60, and then next time I drive it, I'll say it's got 30. The lights on the speedometer and the fuel gauge work in the dash. And uh, not so much on the bolt gauge and temp gauge and that kind of stuff. So, need to address that. Speedometer's off because of the big tires, I think. Wipers work really good. Way better than the 66 we've been driving to work. Headlight, they need to be adjusted. And the left one is way different than the right one. So, the left one's kind of fogged over. I need to throw that away. I stuck a fuel cap on it because when I did put gas in it, there was a vacuum on the tank, so I'm guessing the breather on the original cap wasn't working, so I just stuck another used one on there. High beam indicator isn't working. We have driven it at night a few times. Need to fix that so I stop bright people. My terribly dim headlights. It's missing the brake pedal pad, not a big issue. Maybe you can find a tail column for it. Not a big concern, but if you come across one, we'll stick it in. Oh yeah, the horn doesn't work. Fuck. It's working now. Woohoo! Fix it. High five, stinky dog. Take that off the list. And then those little blind spot stupid things on the mirrors. Probably take those off, throw those away as well. And then it's just mere stuff like four headlight conversion. Maybe I can find a little bit better front bumper, carpet, rockers, bedsides. Where do you quit on that stuff? I mean, next thing you know, you're sandblasting the frame and painting that, rebuilding the rear end, and looking for something with a limited slip and a 12 bolt and new brakes. She's just a beater driver, but. It's way quieter, way smoother. Windows are all way better than that 66. 20 year difference. It's huge. But like, technically it's like driving an 01 Silverado versus a 2021 right now. We do donuts, but it's only half throttle. 4.3, it needs all the throttles. She's pretty peppy. Got a little lifter noise or rocker noise. Couldn't pull the valve cover off, try adjusting that. Doesn't really bother me. If this thing grenades, then we just can put a V8 in it. And then that snowballs. You know, you put a six liter in it, yeah, 400 to hold up, but overdrive's kind of.
today, so you already got the controller for it. So then you're doing exhaust and you're doing the fuel system. And I guess we got to glue a mirror back on again. That lasted about two weeks. Cripes. Well, at least the X is still there from when I glued it on the last time. What'd you roll in this time, stinky dog? So there you have it. We took a 1986 Chevy C10, cheapest square body short bed I could find on Facebook Marketplace that drove onto the trailer. Of course, wouldn't run when I got it home. We got her back on the road. Been daily driving it for just about a week here. Got a few things to wrap up and uh, we're gonna keep digging away on it. I don't know, let me know if you guys wanna see some follow-ups. You know that four headlight conversion, bumper swap, fixing the radio, putting the seat in and all that piddly stuff. Probably stuff you guys don't wanna see. Also probably stuff that I don't wanna record because it's just a pain. But we got ourselves a pretty sweet little driver here. Don't we Duff? He's a wash him. Got a bunch of grease on it. Got some scuzz on it from the last guy. Got a couple of hooey's in the roof. Interior needs good wiping down. And uh, she's running pretty fat with that V8 carburetor on it. Not a bad little rig though. So appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. Check out the other videos. Everybody keeps asking about the uh, orange Ford over there. Nobody says nothing about the 55 though. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. This is a pretty fun little pickup. Glad I finally found one. All right, on to the next one.